Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Saveda Bolide Class A race car. We have four options available to us. The first one is the Class A, which is what I'm going to compare everything else to. The next one is the Class A Keyboard Assistance, which is a modified version that makes it a little bit easier to control using a keyboard versus something like a controller or a steering wheel. Then we have the Class A RHD, which stands for right hand drive, so it's the same exact thing as the Class A, but it's right hand drive. And then we have the Class A right hand drive keyboard assistance, which is the same as the keyboard assistance, but it is once again right hand drive. Now I am an American. I am going to use a left hand drive car because that's pretty much all I ever see in America unless it's an import or a mail truck. Now I will show you the right hand drive just to show what it looks like, but we're not going to probably drive it very much. And the first thing I want to do is just let you listen to the engine because it does have custom engine sounds and if I don't do it now, I'll forget. So I'm going to shut up for a bit so you can adjust your audio settings if necessary. And once I respawn the car, I'll be talking again. So when I respawn it, lower your volume if you raised it. All right, hopefully by now you've had a chance to adjust your audio settings if necessary, because we are gonna be taking a look at the exterior of this car now. And it really is a highly modified Bolide. It is modified so much, in fact, that there are only really three pieces on the exterior that look the same as the stock version. And those pieces are the right door, the left door, and then this small piece of the body called the body. Those all three seem to look the same as the ones on the Bolide. Aside from those though, every other body panel on this car is custom made for the mod. So really this is more of a race car that looks like a bolide than a bolide made into a race car it seems like because of how much custom work went into it. I'm assuming it is based on the bolide to some extent of course but it's it's very similar to a real race car where it's pretty much the same idea. It's a race car that happens to resemble the stock car more so than a stock car made to be a race car. While we're out here we can go ahead and pull up the J-beam structure and you can see it matches up well with all of the modified parts except for the side skirts but the author is aware of that and he will probably fix it in a later version I would assume. But if you see anything glitchy in a crash it seems like it's almost always going to be those stinking side skirts uh, because everything else on the car seems to be done really well. And we can go to the next camera angle after I get through all these uh, J-beam structure things. So here's the next camera angle which is a roof camera and it's near the end of the car. I haven't actually driven with this much but it seems like it'd be kind of interesting to try to drive it because it's a position you normally don't drive from ever in the video games. Then we have the more traditional hood cam which is actually placed a little bit more on the glass than the hood but it feels like a hood cam when you do drive it. Moving on to the interior there are very few things in here that are the same as the stock version of the car. The only two things I can find that are the same is the steering wheel and the gated gear shifter over here to your right. Everything else in the interior seems to be different though. For example, the layout of the gauges is different. The parking brake is a different design. And even the seat you sit in is different. Now this is a race car, so that also means the door paneling and all that is stripped out and we have a roll cage in its place. And we could try to look behind us, but rear visibility is none <laughs> in this situation. You really have no rear visibility, but you're in a race car. Just go faster than everybody else and you'll be fine. And now we finally drive the car, which is not the easiest thing to do because this thing drives exactly like what it is, which is an older race car. And the thing about older race cars is the only thing that keeps them on the road and out of a ditch is the talent of the driver. And unfortunately, we are lacking in driver talent. So I have two options. I could go really fast and crash on the first or second corner, or we could just take it slow and make sure we don't 
crash. Which is what I'm going to do, because I want to at least give you a lap of the course to show you how this thing drives before I crash it. And of course, I'll still accelerate on the straights, but you got to be really careful on all of the corners with this car in every way possible. For example, it doesn't have any of those fancy assists that a modern day car has. It doesn't even have ABS. So if you brake too hard, you're going to spin out. If you brake at the wrong time, you're going to spin out. If you hit the accelerator too hard, you're going to spin out. If you accelerate at the wrong time, you're going to spin out. Basically, if you don't drive this thing good, you're going to spin out. The one thing about this car, though, is when you do go around a corner fast and you don't spin out, it is really rewarding feeling. If you are a good driver and you can pull off every corner at the max speed this car can do, it would be an amazingly fast car. Unfortunately, I just cannot do that. It would not happen with me as the driver. And trying to think back on how I can compare to how this car handles, it kind of does remind me of like a similar car in Forza, the uh, Zack Speed Capri, which is also available in Beam and G Drive. Now the one in this game is really grippy and easy to control. The one in Forza, which is a little bit more of a simulator game but not like a full-on sim, was a lot more difficult to control. It's very similar to this car though, where you have to respect the car and not do anything stupid because it will spin out. Which is the exact same way I feel about this car. You know, follow the racing line, you'll be fine. Don't follow it, you're gonna crash. Or just go slow and then you don't have to do either, you don't have to follow it at all. Alright, so that's a lap and then some. So now we can go ahead and just uh, wreck this car up. So we're gonna just go full throttle ahead and then get a little bit of slow mo going on this collision. So you can see the impact. I think 100 times slow mo will be most appropriate for the first crash at over 100 miles per hour. Perfect. I hit right where I wanted to, right into the wall. And you see the body panels on this thing are very willing to come off, which is what race cars are like. They're designed where the body panels are held on as loosely as they possibly can, basically, because if they hold them on any tighter, it's more weight to the car, and you never want more weight on a race car. So the fact that all the body panels fly off like this is uh, very realistic. We can go and speed it up a little bit since the impact is over and all that's left is the body panels flying all over the place. And that thing still has some speed to it. It's still going. There we go. The tire is just going all over the place. And that has immobilized the car. And it's funny how slow this engine is to like rev down. It just takes a while to finally go back to idle when it's broken. I really want to look at the inside though because it looks like from the outside that the inside is basically unharmed because of the roll cage. And looking in here, it really did hold up really well, possibly even a little too well. I don't know exactly how strong a roll cage would be at over 100 miles per hour, but this one seems like it's almost undamaged. I noticed a little bit of damage in the dash, so it did shift a little bit, but this thing held up really, really well, which is why I'm suspicious it might be a little too strong, but... I'm honestly not sure on that. It might be perfectly realistic. And we can take a look at it from the outside as well so you can really see it. And you see just where the driver is held up on both the left and the right. So if you had the right hand drive car it would have held up equally well. You do notice the body panels did shift a little bit inside of the roll cage on that side. And then this side, I think you can see a little bit of a damaged part to the roll cage right there. So it does get damaged. It's just you really have to uh, crash it hard to damage that roll cage. And then the back of the car, you can look at that as well. Not too much to look at there. Because everything that you could really look at has fallen off somewhere. And now that you've seen how the car drives, we can focus on how it crashes. So we'll start off by just doing some bumps and bruises to the car and see how long it can last doing that. And the answer is not very long. Because if you look at this front bumper, it's actually raised up in a way where that front wheel cannot make contact with the ground. So it's basically useless. This one is being lifted up so it can just barely make contact with the ground which means if I go left or right it barely wants to go in that direction so I know one more bump it'll probably kill itself I'll try to make it gentle but I don't have the most control over this thing up oh, still driving keep going then is that it is that it wait 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 we can still drive somehow I think my right tire is just barely on the ground, and that's not, oh, no, we're up sight, okay. So once again, the body panels love to fly off when you give them the chance, and where the driver is holds up really well. We can actually take a look at some of the body panels and see what they look like. So the front 
crumpled a ton from those impacts and it makes sense you know that front is made to be lightweight this is a race car after all it's not made to absorb impact or anything really it's just a real lightweight thing and it's made for aerodynamics that's all it's there for that fender looks like it held up okay there's the mirror doing its job just mirroring things and I know there are a few more body panels that came off but I don't know where they went I think uh, like yeah the rear uh, fender is gone but don't know where it went I only found one oh well we can do one more crash here but it seems like most of them are looking pretty similar so I don't know what I could really do to make it look interesting I'll try to be crashing it into it using the rear of the car so like that it's a little different but once again same theme body panels fall off driver stays safe maybe if we go really fast we could get something different to happen so we can move over to a different map and if we really wanted to go fast we could probably go to highway and make it up to almost 300 miles per hour here and slam into a tree for this test we can go ahead and use the right hand drive version of the car just to show you that it does actually function but the American in me is going to be screaming this is the wrong side the whole time. So there you go. And it basically looks like a mirrored version of the one we were driving earlier. Nothing too different about it. Heck, if I wanted to, I could have just mirrored the video and you would never notice. Except for the map being mirrored and the gauge being mirrored. Okay, you would have noticed. But it really isn't uh, that significantly different. It's just an option you have if you prefer a left-hand drive or right-hand drive. And really, that just comes down to where you were born. If you were born in a country that drives left-hand drive, you're going to like the left-hand drive. If you were born right-hand drive, well, you're going to want the opposite. Probably. So here's the impact, at least the main impact. I'm looking for that tree hit right there. So we're at 100 times slow-mo, and it's still moving pretty fast. So this should do some good damage to the roll cage, actually, if anything's going to damage it. Although, it looks like it even held up through that. So I would say the roll cage is probably too strong seeing that. And... The side skirt is the part that's kind of stretched out a tiny bit at the top. You can just ignore that and, um, oh my goodness, we just have a dust cloud. There we go. And we can try to take a look at this roll cage and, I mean, it looks like it is almost undamaged. If, from the inside, we really can't tell what's going on here. But from the outside, it looks like the roll cage held its shape almost perfectly, which to me is too strong for a 200 mile per hour crash. You should see damage on the roll cage. Roll cages are strong. But not that strong. That's too strong, I think, unfortunately. So we can go ahead and move on to a different map. And I want to go to Grismal Pure to demonstrate something that's kind of cool. I want to show you how important the wing is on this car for stability at high speeds. And to do this, there's a real simple test we can do. We spawn up the car with the wing, drive it up to 150 miles per hour, and then steer it left. Then we do the same thing without the wing, and you'll see just how important this wing is. So. 150 miles per hour, full left, and we're holding the throttle the whole way. And you'll see that the car is able to keep driving. It doesn't spin out, it just does a cornering maneuver, okay? So now we're gonna switch out the winged version of the car to the wingless version of the car and do the exact same test. Accelerate up to 150 miles per hour. And then tight steering to the left. and you notice there's a big difference in what the car does. Without the wing, it spins out and then it spins out again because it doesn't have all the downforce on the rear wheel, so it just doesn't have the traction of the other version. So it's not able to do those high speed corners without the wing. So if you're driving this car, the wing is very important. Also, if the wing falls off while you're driving, it does drive like this version. So if the wing ever falls off, just stop driving because you're going to have a terrible time. And if you really want a terrible time, what you do is you remove or you replace the front wheels with the thinner front wheels that come on the normal version of the car because you can do that and then well you made a donut machine basically because you try to accelerate with this and just wheel spin wheel spin wheel spin it is an absolutely terrible thing to drive and it looks hilarious how it doesn't fill in the uh, the fenders at all like there's this huge gap you can tell it's made for fatter tires and like I said driving this thing is miserable you can't even accelerate really because you just get wheel spin. You gotta be so gentle on the throttle here. And going 70 miles per hour, we put our foot down. I'm sure we can spin this thing out just from that. 80 miles per hour, put the foot down. Yep, wheel spin. All right, 100 miles per hour, put the foot down. Wheel spin. This thing is awful to drive. Don't do this. If you do this, you've ruined a race car. Now, if you want to do donuts, on the other hand, you can put this thing in manual. And first gear it and there we go look at that that's perfect for donuts 
That's about all it's good for at this point. That's all it's good for. Alright. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and uh, go to a different map because there's something else I wanted to talk about and I don't want to do it in somewhere that's so boring looking. I've gone over the difference between the right hand drive and the left hand drive version of the car but I have not gone over the difference between the keyboard assistance version and the normal version of the car. The keyboard assistance version modifies three parts of the car, the brakes in the front and the rear, which is two separate parts, and the transmission. For the brakes, it adds ABS to the car. So now, if you hit the brakes on your keyboard, you don't have to worry about the, the uh, wheels locking up on you and then possibly spinning out because ABS will stop that. Because with the keyboard, you can't hit half braking pressure. You hit all or none. So you really do need ABS when you try to drive with the keyboard. Otherwise, you do some weird thing where you like try to tap the brakes or something, but that's just awkward. You wouldn't want to do that. And then it also modifies the transmission. And the transmission modification just makes it slower, basically. It's kind of unusual. The car is slower from a modification to the transmission, not the engine. But here's a quick demonstration between a normal version of the car and the keyboard one. You can see just how much faster the normal one is, just right off the bat. It takes off where this one is uh, moving quite a bit slower and it wants to hit that wall, but I'm going to tell it no. And then for braking, you can see this one, you hit the brakes and the wheels lock up and you kind of slide a bit. Oh no! <laughs> that was not exactly how that was supposed to go. But you saw that one's brakes were locking up when we tried to use the keyboard to slow down. This one, the brakes didn't lock up when we tried to slow down earlier. And somehow this thing still drives. Both of you accelerate. This is my monster, Frankenstein's race car. Fear it! It can almost go in a straight line. Once I have perfected straight line travel, it'll be the world's fastest car. What a mess I've made here. And honestly, I think that about covers all there is to this car. I also didn't mention that the lights inside do light up when you put the headlights on, but there are currently no headlights. I think. Those are coming in a future version, and I did mention that uh, the gear lever was from the normal version of the car, but it does not function at the moment. The good news is, though, is the parking brake does function. And it's not like from the transmission or nothing. It's not because we have the different transmission in it. It's all of them. The transmission doesn't actually function in terms of looks. But the steering wheel and gas pedal do function. Clutch does, too. And brake pedal. I don't think I said brake pedal today. And the mirrors work, so you can try to see what's behind you, but on this camera angle, they're useless. What about here? Can you really see anything behind you? Nah. I, I wouldn't trust those things to see what's behind me. They're just so tiny. I guess ha half of it is I'm on a monitor, which, you know, is only so big. And then you look at this tiny piece of your monitor, and it's like, you know, 100 pixels tall. You really can't see much in that. Well, all that's left now is to wreck these cars, so let's go ahead and move on to Rural Slope and crash it there. Now this one, the car might actually be able to reach almost 300 miles per hour, I think. Because it is a steeper slope than the one we were driving on earlier, so it is totally possible. We'll see what it can do. Start off real careful here because this thing does sit so low to the ground. You have to excuse the slowness. Now go. Although this isn't that long of a slope, is it? It's it's moving though. It is definitely moving. It looks like the engine can't help anymore, so now it's just gravity, unfortunately. So 230 miles per hour is about what it's gonna hit because not only do you have gravity fighting against this car, this thing has so much downforce on it probably that that also helps to reduce the top speed, I would assume. Anyways, impact commencing now. There's some damage to that roll cage. Finally. Although even then, it looks like it holds up somewhat. It's hard because you just have this mess of parts and it's like, where's the roll cage? It's somewhere in there. I don't know where, but it's somewhere in there. And you do notice a little bit of glitchiness. I'm almost certain those are the side skirts. Once those are fixed, should be perfect in crashes, even as severe as that, in terms of uh, glitchiness at least. And I want to try this. I want to try removing all of the body parts so you just have the roll cage. Oh, the roll cage is part of the body. Whoopsie. All right, put the body back on and then remove the panels on top of it. So we get rid of that. 
Get rid of that. I thought the roll cage would be something separate. I was mistaken. Get rid of the rear end. Get rid of the gauges. Why, why did I get rid of the gauges? I don't know. Get rid of the nose cone. The wing can stay because I'll use that extra stability. Now, I know the other parts do also add some sort of downforce, probably, so I'm not exactly sure how stable this thing will be. Hopefully, the wing will be enough to keep me uh, alive, though. I mean, we'll be going so fast, it'll generate a lot of downforce. I just noticed it looks like this car is a staggered uh, tire setup. That's cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, this is, this is not as stable as it was on the other version. Once we get up to speed, though, stability increases thanks to all the downforce. All right, so let's see what this roll cage does. It does deform. Good. So maybe it's not too strong because I was going in a 30 mile per hour crash and it deformed there. Maybe the one I did before was only like 100 miles per hour in the end because it hit something else before it hit the tree for all I know. That wasn't exactly the most scientific of crash before. This one, this one's a little bit more scientific. And now we got to make a convertible of this thing, and I don't really know how much a convertible this thing can become. Maybe none at all, for all I know. We'll see what happens, I guess. And it's kind of funny. It's like, forget repairing the car. We'll just get a new one. That is infinite money methods right there. It's just so much easier just to do a one-click than add all the parts back in. Now, in some crashes, I have noticed some oddities with the roof and the way it crashes into things. So right here, it might demonstrate that, where sometimes the roof kind of goes through things. I don't know, we'll see. So we'll get 100 times slow-mo on this so you can really see it well. And there we go, the roof. Oh, you see right there, that is what I was talking about. The door got crushed, but the roof kind of held its shape a lot more than you would expect. Like, there's no way it could have fit through there unless the roof got crushed. But for some reason it decided to hold up, which is kind of odd. I think it might be part of the roll cage holding up or something, I don't know. It's strange. Can we still drive my uh, car? Yeah, it's not a convertible at all. I'll, I'll say that now. But we can at least still sort of drive it? Yeah, sort of drive it, that's all. It's some something about it was damaged because it just wanted to spin out all the time. I'm curious what the car would look like though, just... If I actually looked at it, what it would look like without the uh, body. <laughs> looks kind of cool actually looks like half of a LMP car or something alright on to the last thing we're gonna do which will be dropping it down leap of death I do wonder though if this thing will actually be able to clear the jump it's it's pretty low to the ground now that I think about it this might not work out you can do it oh it actually did clear it Wow, this thing's going far. This thing is going really far. I think it believes it has wings. Alright, so this first impact is going to be real hard. We'll throw lots of slow-mo on this right before, well before actually, so I should do. Make sure we can see the impact. And it looks like once again there's some good damage to the roll cage. Parts be flying everywhere. I just realized something cool. I, I, I gotta point out real quick. Uh, okay, right there, the parts that hold on the wing, those come off separate. Like those two little parts that hold it on, they come off separate of each other, and that's kind of cool. I don't know where the other part went at the moment, but you can see that is just one of the parts, and the other one is somewhere in this flying debris. Debris. Somebody I know used to say debris. Who was it? Why did I even have them saying debris? I have absolutely no clue. Yeah, it was a TV show. It must have been a TV show. That's one of those things that's so stupid it only happens on a TV show. Okay, I just know I've heard somebody say debris. Oh, there goes the uh, side skirt. Glitching out a little bit, unfortunately. And there's not much to see here, so I'll just go full speed and... I don't know, that roll carriage held up pretty well. Yeah, I'm a little iffy on that thing. It just seems too strong. And then we could go ahead and do one in full speed. This one, I'm gonna just hit that jump as fast as we can. We hit that thing at like 80 miles per hour. 
it accelerates really fast. Even being on the dirt road, it accelerates fast. I guess when you have tires fat enough, you can do anything you ever dreamed of. And they aren't quite slicks, are they? So they probably work out better than you expect in the dirt. Because usually with a car like this, you'd expect slicks, but I don't believe they were. That one actually made it to the bottom. Not bad. Eh, it's just a pile of mess, though. Not worth looking at, really. Let's just take a quick look at that tire. Are you a slick? Oh, maybe it is a slick. It's like, I might be. Well, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna flip you over so I can tell. Now, they're not slicks. So you can see uh, it does have tread on it. Anyways, that will do it for the racing bull eye. Until next time, this is my YBR. I'll see ya.